In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 through 8, and answer the question, why should I be sexually pure? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 through 8 says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things. As we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you, for God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. We currently live in a sexually charged culture. I probably don't need to convince you of that. How do you do that, though, as a Christian? How can you maintain, or why should you maintain, sexual purity when the society around you doesn't see that as something valuable or important? Well, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 8, and try and answer that question, why should I be sexually pure? Thought number one, self-control and holiness. We shouldn't dismiss the fact that we have a biological urge to reproduce and that sex is pleasurable and that when you have it, it feels good, right? We shouldn't dismiss that. We shouldn't pretend like that isn't the reality of the situation. And we also shouldn't pretend like we don't have sexual desires because we all know that we do. But our sexual desires have a specific purpose for us. And that specific purpose for those sexual desires is to be honoring to God with what we do with our bodies. So if we are to honor God and exhibit self-control and holiness, then we need to follow what the Lord has told us about sexual ethics, which means our sexual practice should be lifelong, monogamous, heterosexual marriage. This is what the Bible teaches. It's very, very clear. We should do that because when we do it, we are exhibiting self-control and demonstrating holiness with our bodies. Thought number two, avoid sin against others. One of the reasons why we don't allow our physical passions to overwhelm us is because when we do, we don't just sin against ourselves and against God, but we sin against our neighbor as well. All of a sudden, our actions that in our culture we would say are strictly private, we recognize have an impact on the people that we are sinning with or adjacent to. And this is something that we need to consider. In a day and an age where we're all being told that we need to consider the well-being of the people around us, which is certainly true, are you doing so in your sexual practice by maintaining sexual purity? If we're trying to be consistent, then we would do that and avoid sinning against others. Thought number three, God is an avenger. So one of the reasons we should remain sexually pure is because God ultimately is going to avenge those whom have been sinned against sexually. He is going to avenge those who have been hurt those who have been wronged, those who have been mistreated and abused. And he is going to make right, ultimately, all of those things that have been done that are wicked. In a sense, our sexuality is a 
an example of how we view our relationship with others. And if we are strictly selfish and not considerate of God or others in our sex life, then it's very likely that we will be not considerate of others and of God in every area of life. These three thoughts come to you from the assigned reading, 1 Thessalonians chapters 4 and 5. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by joining the Facebook group, Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.